The Four Angels at the Four Corners of the Earth Revelation chapter 7 is one of the parenthetical chapters in the book of Revelation. Parenthetical being the view of a subject without advancing the order of events. In simple terms, a parenthetical chapter is a pause in the sequence of events before they continue again. There is a clear pattern within the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation chronologically moves through the different events which express the wrath of God, which are the seven seals of God, the seven trumpets, and the seven bowls of God's wrath. Revelation chapter 7 is a parenthetical chapter placed in between the seven seals of God, between the sixth and the seventh seal. In Revelation chapter 6, the first six seals are open, which bring the likes of the four horsemen of the apocalypse onto the earth and other calamitous disasters unto the earth. And in the last verse, a question is asked, which opens the door for the topic of this parenthetical chapter we will examine today. Revelation chapter 6, verse 17. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Revelation chapter 7 reveals to us who exactly shall be able to stand. Revelation chapter 7, verses 1 through 3. After these things, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, on the sea, or on any tree. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. Whilst reviewing this chapter, it is firstly important to highlight the two groups that will be saved. First of those are those protected Jews who are able to go through the great tribulation unharmed. We find them in Revelation chapter 7 verses 1 through 8. The second group is the great multitude of martyrs who are seen standing in heaven in Revelation chapter 7 verses 9 through 17. In Revelation chapter 7 verses 1 through 3, the holding the winds here is essentially the calm before the storm. We can see clearly that angels are associated with forces of nature. For instance, in Revelation chapter 7 verse 1, which I just read, they are associated with the wind. In Revelation chapter 14 verse 18, they are associated with fire. And in Revelation chapter 16 verse 5, they are associated with water. Some Bible scholars hold the view that this holding of the winds is literal, whilst others hold the view that this holding of the winds is figurative, as winds are emblems of commotions, and very properly, as they are the natural causes of storms. Thus, this figurative expression is used and explained by Jeremiah chapter 49, verses 36 and 37. And upon Elam will I bring the four winds from the four quarters of heaven, and will scatter them towards all those winds, and there shall be no nation whither the outcasts of Elam shall not come. For I will cause Elam to be dismayed before their enemies, and before them that seek their life. And I will bring evil upon them, even my fierce anger, saith the Lord. And I will send the sword after them, till I have consumed them. Whether this holding of the winds is literal or figurative is not what is pivotal. What we should dwell on is this, that in this chapter, there is clearly a pause in the chronological wrath of God occurring on the earth at that time. And this pause is caused by four separate angels standing at the four corners of the world. What is interesting is that a fifth angel arrives onto the scene and tells us exactly why this calm in the storm is taking place. And that is because the earth and the seas should not be harmed until the servants of our God have been sealed with the seal of God on their foreheads. Within scriptures, a seal indicates ownership and protection. What may surprise you is that you too, if you are a believer in Christ, are sealed by the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 1 verses 13 through 14, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession 
unto the praise of his glory. The seal of the Holy Spirit is God's guarantee that first of all, you belong to him. Yes, you do. And secondly, that you will spend all of eternity with him in heaven. However, the seal we see here in Revelation chapter 7 is one of protection that is given specifically to the 144,000, meaning they will be able to get through the Great Tribulation safely. This seal is in stark contrast to the mark of the beast the Antichrist will give to those who worship and follow him. The four angels at the four corners of the earth indicate that God's power and authority extend to all parts of the world. The earth has four corners, the east, the west, the north, and the south. Each corner has one angel, holding the wind from blowing against the earth. Winds, as illustrated in various texts in the Bible, were used by God for different purposes. One of the ways God used the wind was to cause destruction upon the land to punish his people. It was a destructive force of God's judgment on the sinful inhabitants of the earth. Exodus chapter 10 verses 13 through 14 says, So Moses stretched out his rod over the land of Egypt, and the Lord brought an east wind on the land all that day and all that night. When it was morning, the east wind brought the locusts, and the locusts went up over all the land of Egypt and rested on all the territory of Egypt. They were very severe. Previously, there had been no such locusts as they, nor shall there be such after them. The wind that blew from the east brought about locusts in Egypt during the time that Moses had been sent to rescue the Israelites from the cruel hands of the Egyptians. The winds brought about a calamity and a plague on the Egyptians. Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 13. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, I will cause a stormy wind to break forth in my fury, and there shall be a flooding rain in my anger, and great hailstones in fury to consume it. Jonah chapter 1, verse 4. But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship was about to be broken up. He sent a wind on the sea to disrupt Jonah's journey. The wind shook the ship that Jonah was using to run away from God. The angels exercised authority to hold back winds from destroying the land as they waited for God's instruction to release it. By holding back these winds, the angels were protecting the earth from their devastating effects. And God gave out his instructions through an angel that descended from the east. This is why the four angels had to wait. They could not unleash the winds of destruction until God's faithful servants had been sealed and protected. A similar thing happened in the land of Egypt when God sent the plague on the firstborn of the Egyptians. He told Moses to have the Israelites' doorposts marked so that they would not be affected by the plague. Exodus chapter 12 verses 12 through 13. For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night and will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the house where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. The seal of God will protect the 144,000 from the effect of the four angels that will blow their trumpets in Revelation chapter 8, and also from the remaining three angels that will blow their trumpets that are known as the three woes. So. What can we learn from this as believers? One, God is in control. Two, God protects and claims those who are his. Mankind and human beings had this misconception that they are in control. The truth is that we are not in control. Really and truly, we are not in control. The governments in your country are not in control. The wealthiest people in the world are not in control. Kingdoms have risen and kingdoms have fallen. The Mongol Empire, which was founded by the Mongol warlord Temujin, who assumed the title of Genghis Khan, rose, and yet his empire still fell. The Roman Empire rose, and yet it still fell. Look at the corridors of history, and you will see a pattern of kingdoms rising and kingdoms falling. All the while, God is still in control. He alone is in charge of all the universe. 
Lightning does not strike without his permission. Thunder does not roar without his go-ahead. Winds and waves obey him. He alone is in control. 2. God protects and claims those who are his. Isn't that wonderful? To know this Almighty God, who is in control, actively claims and protects those who are his. God claims those who are his, and those who belong to God will spend all eternity with him.